Talented artists can tell complex stories with simple pictures, and Nicholas Cole is a talented artist. With his depiction of Princess Aurora, he's telling us that she's no hero. At the very least, she's more complicated. In this art deep dive, we'll tell you why we think she might just be in league with the villains. In trading card games, each game piece is a composition, a collaboration between an experienced artist and an art director working together to tell a story. Lorcana is no exception. This first set is being carefully assembled, with each piece of art telling us something about the world they are building. After all, this set will be the introduction to Lorcana for hundreds of thousands of people. And with Ravensburger using beloved Disney characters, they must account for the source material. Every deviation must be done with a purpose. And deviate from the source material Ravensburger did with Princess Aurora, providing many clues that this isn't the Aurora that we know. She's more complicated. She's darker and likely in league with the Mistress of Evil herself. To see why, let's look at the art. We'll start with the lighting. It's dark, but it's not night, nor is it day. Whether dawn or dusk, it's straddling the line between the two. Contrast this with Nicholas Cole's other characters. Heroes Moana, Simba, and Mickey bask in the sunshine. Aladdin and Elsa are pictured at night, but it's not foreboding. The night skies are open, the view clear and beautiful. Back to Aurora with her gloomy lighting. Lighting telling us that we are between two extremes, the darkness of the night and the light of the day. The background tells us that we're in the classic Disney animation. This tree is very much in the style of the 1959 film. On the left, we see a castle. These spires suggest that this is, in fact, the castle from the film. So we know we're in Aurora's world, but this is not the Aurora we know. Let's start with the obvious. First, this isn't any dress we've seen her wear before. If this was classic Aurora, we would expect her to be in one of her standard dresses, like Robin Hood appears in his classic garb. This dress features a modern blue line design and accents different from anything she has worn before. Second, classic Aurora cannot perform magic. This Aurora is. How do we know? If the obvious composition of the piece isn't enough to convince you, let's look at her eyes. Princess Aurora's eyes are blue, all blue. Her irises blend in with her pupils, making her look like one of the Fremen from Dune. This is abnormal. All of Nicholas's characters that traditionally have normal eyes, Aladdin, Moana, and Simba, present with black pupils and colored irises, except for one, Elsa the only other Cole character that is actively performing magic on her card. Her eyes are blue, all blue. Now let's look at the crown. This too is not Aurora's, looking like no other crown in the classic film. Another indication that this Aurora is different. So we know she's different, but how do we know she's a villain? because Nicholas Cole is telling us. In a 2016 interview, Nicholas Cole was asked about archetypes. He answered, it's important to be cognizant of how you're playing to or against archetypes when you design. Like any rule, they are there to be broken, but only if you fully understand them. I think people, myself included, find archetype comfortable and familiar. It is visual shorthand for cultural meaning that can be powerful when you're trying to make a particular impression. That also means it can be powerfully subverted. A kind-eyed hero may have a subtle, pointed, villainous cue that tips off a betrayal. A subtle, pointed, villainous cue. Pointed like a crown. This crown. Nicholas has placed an odd design on the front, a black M-like shape, which isn't necessary. In fact, you could argue it detracts from the piece unless it's there as part of the story. And this isn't just any M. It's a symbol. Maleficent is often represented by her cowl and horns. Simplify it a bit, and you get this. Simplify it some more, and you get this. This design came from an Etsy store and is meant to represent the Mistress of Evil herself. And this symbol is what we find on Sweet Aurora's crown. Not convinced? William and I scoured the Maleficent and Sleeping Beauty canon for another crown like the one on the card, and we found none except one. 
Ingrid's three-pointed silver crown from Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. In this movie, Ingrid is the main villain. Of course, Nicholas Cole has played in this world before, illustrating The Curse of Maleficent, A Tale of Good and Evil, a book meant to accompany the film Maleficent, a book that plays with who is a villain and who is a hero, stating, the difference between a hero and a villain often depends on perspective. In this book, like the Maleficent movies, Aurora comes to think of Maleficent as a friend, a protector, a fairy godmother. In fact, Aurora and Maleficent form almost a mother-daughter bond. With a few small plot changes, Aurora could have lived in the moors with Maleficent, becoming her true daughter and allying herself to Maleficent's causes. Allow us one final observation. When Nicholas saw his art released, he created a montage showing us all of his characters in one image, which he posted online. Now, maybe they were positioned based on color. Maybe they were positioned randomly. Maybe there was no thought put into it at all. Or maybe, just maybe, Maleficent and Aurora were placed just as they were on purpose. With Aurora's arm outstretched to her adoptive mother and Maleficent glancing over to Aurora with a slight smile, a smile that says, you thought she was on your side, when in fact, she belongs to me. If you're a fan of gaming art and you enjoyed this art deep dive, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing this video with other Disney or Lorcana fans. Let us know down below what you think we got right, what we got wrong, or what we might have missed. And if you're looking for more information on artist Nicholas Cole, watch this artist interview next.